Hi, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to go through the very basics of downloading, installing, and running SDR Uno. This video is very much geared to the first time user. You may have just acquired your RSP, and this will walk you through the process of downloading the software, uh, how to connect up your RSP, and how to verify that everything is working correctly. So again, very much the basics. To make it easier for you to navigate through this video, we've broken it down into seven short sections. You can see the relative timing for each shown on this slide, so if you want to come back and refer to a particular section, just use the scrub bar in YouTube to take you to the time that you need for the section you're looking for. So the first step will be to download the software. And all the software you need is available from our website at sdrplay.com. So let me walk you through that process and we'll take you to the website, navigation to the software download page and uh, download the software for you to use. To make it even easier, we've implemented what we call the start here flow. And once you go to the website, look for the green start here button and it will walk you through the remaining steps. Once you get to the SDR Play homepage, there are a number of ways to get into the Start Here flow. Of course, you could just type in the URL that's listed on the Quick Start Guide that came with your RSP, but it's probably a little easier if we just click around. So we can go up to the um, top of the screen where it says Software Downloads, and you see there's a link there for Start Here, and it's also duplicated under the, uh, the Help menu and that will take you straight to start here. Or of course, since you know that you've uh, gone to the website needing software, which is why you're there, you can click on the Need Software button. Whichever way you choose to go, you will then get to the software home page and you will see the Start Here green button in the upper right corner. So what we can do is simply click on that and that will take us into the Start Here flow. We then get to the Start Here homepage with a bit of introductory comments and telling you why exactly we're asking you to go through the registration process. And then again, click on the Start Here button to continue. And the next thing uh, we'll be asked is to input our name and email address. So I will put in my name and an email address. It will ask which country uh, you purchased your RSP and the location. And uh, a lot in the US are purchased through HRO. It asks you for which is your device type. And I'm just going to use a DX for demonstration purposes here and operating system and I'll say Windows 10. Uh, this is actually good information for us to uh, help uh, troubleshoot any technical issues you may have down the road. Uh, the information is uh, Confidential, we don't sell it to anybody, we don't use it to spam you with email, but we do insist on registration if you want to avail yourself of our tech support. So first up, we go to the left where it says select serial number prefix and drop that down. And then we select the first four digits of our serial number from that list. And for this RSP1A, it's 1804 028 795. Once we've entered that, submit and continue. Now we get to choose which um, software we wish to use. We will pick SDR Uno because that's the uh, preferred choice. And here we see a choice of various things. Uh, the API other supported software is not necessary. If we download the basic SDR Uno package, it includes everything we need all in one download. So all we need to do is collect, uh, click on select. Uh, it will then tell us a little bit about the latest version. We click on download. And we'll see a little message at the bottom of the screen. And in just a few seconds, we'll get a message that the software has been downloaded and it will then be scanned for viruses. 
and now we have the option to open file. One thing you have to manage before running the software is make sure that you can connect your RSP to your PC. Uh, your PC needs to have at least a USB 2.0 port. And uh, if you look at the uh, back of your RSP device, you'll find it has a what's got, they call a USB type B connector on the back of it. And uh, you will need a suitable cable to connect the two together. Uh, this is a very standard cable used on many printers and scanners. Uh, it turned out I had many of them just sitting in my junk box that I was able to use successfully. Now, there is a bit of a myth flying around that you need a special USB cable for it to work. Um, a lot of people will tell you you need a cable that has ferrite cores on it. As you will notice, mine does not. Um, and while there is some truth to the fact that if you're in a situation where noise is induced into the USB cable and gets into your RSP, you may be to, able to eliminate some of that interference by having ferrite cores. But in general, it is not a requirement, and certainly it is not a requirement to have ferrite cores on the cable for the RSP to be recognized by the SDR UNO software. So you might forego any added expense and uh, just try using a cable that you have lying around. And then subsequently, if you determine that you do have locally induced interference, then you might wanna try a cable with ferrite cores. Okay, so previously we downloaded the software and it was sitting there waiting for us. And uh, depending on what you've done since then, either that uh, file is available on the screen to be clicked on to run, or you may need to navigate into your downloads folder and run the file from there. Let's walk you through that in detail. But at this point, do not plug in your RSP, but we can now open the file we downloaded in the previous step. At this point, we just follow the prompts that show up on the screen. So we will allow changes. You'll see various messages come through. Uh, select the button that says, I accept the agreement and move on. I always use the default settings here and we will go for the full installation. That will give us the latest uh, plugins available from both SDR Play and from the community at large. And uh, you may find those very useful to play with later on. So next, let it make a shortcut for you and on the desktop. Confirm all that stuff and just let the thing cook. For the API, we're asked again to accept the agreement. So having confirmed that we have not plugged in an RSP yet, we can continue. Again, accepting the defaults. In my case, I had a previous install, so we'll allow it to go in there. And now install. It wants to close the API service again, because I have a previous install, you probably will not see this the first time you download the software. It's now installing the hardware driver. Okay, now at last we're allowed to plug in our RSP and just wait a few seconds for it to install. You should hear the Windows chimes for, for when a USB device is plugged in and that will be an indication that it has been installed and uh, then we can uh, click on next. One more time, accept the agreement for the plugins. I don't have DAB here, but if you have DAB in your region, you may want to make sure you read those instructions, although you can pull them up for review later on. A 
again allowing it to install all the plugins you can check them out if you don't like them you can uninstall them no reason not to install all of them at this point and at that point the installation is complete there's just one more thing we need to do before we're ready to get this up and running, and that is connect some sort of antenna to our RSP. Now, there is a myth out there that you need a special antenna to use with an SDR. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. And uh, if you're a, a practicing ham already, then whatever antennas you already have will be perfectly usable. And uh, if you're an HF operator, you probably um, have a bunch of antenna connectors with PL259s on the end. So the only thing you'll need in that case is some sort of adapter. And uh, hopefully you can see, here's one here I use, which goes from uh, uh, SMA mail on one end, which connects to the RSP. And on the other end, it has an SO239, which will mate with your PL259 connectors. In fact, if you look at the illustration on this slide, you can get them also as a short pigtail, which has the added advantage of being a bit of a stress relief and, and avoids uh, dragging down the uh, RSP if the antenna cable falls off the table or so, and so on. Uh, the other thing is, if you don't have any antenna, for the purposes of evaluation, you don't need anything fancy at all. And I'm quite partial to this uh, blue wire antenna that I take with me when I'm traveling. It's uh, quite simply a length of wire I found in the junk box. And it has a banana plug on one end and, and a simple uh, a crocodile clip on the other. It's hard to see with this background. And uh, a crocodile clip on the other to provide mechanical support. And the, um, the nice thing is the uh, banana plug on this end fits perfectly inside the, uh, the SO239 connector on my adapter, like so. Uh, for a more detailed discussion of antennas, um, I would refer you to a video that my colleague John Hudson recently prepared. You can see the, uh, the URL on the screen there, or you can just go search for it by uh, go to sdrplay.com and type antennas in the search box or look through John's recent blog posts. So having done that, let's uh, let's fire this thing up and get it running. Another popular misconception about SDRs in general and SDR Uno, I guess, in particular, is that there is a magic group of settings that you need for any given situation. Uh, the fact of the matter is SDR Uno does give you access to a large number of settings, but those settings are for optimizing reception, not for acquiring reception in the first place. And uh, what I want to do is I just want to show you some of the key settings you need that will generate signals from your RSP that you can see and hear. These are the only settings you really need to have set up correctly to be able to see a spectrum and a waterfall display. Starting on the left, if applicable, select the correct input, the one to which you've connected your antenna. If you have an RSP1A, there's only one input, so those boxes do not appear. Secondly, turn the gain slider all the way up to the top and only reduce it if you see an ADC overload message appear in the main window. Next, select the correct mode, AM, FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, etc. And then select the correct frequency. Please note that the frequency is always displayed in Hertz. So make sure that you have enough zero shown. It's quite a common mistake for someone to have dialed up 7 kilohertz thinking that they're tuning to 7 megahertz, for example. One way to avoid that difficulty is to use the band select buttons on the right, which will correctly tune the frequency range that you're looking for and at the same time set the correct mode for you. And finally, never forget to press the play button in the main window to start the thing running. Now let's see how this works in practice. Now we have an antenna connected to our RSP and the RSP is plugged into our computer, we can start the software for the first time. And we can do that quite simply from the shortcut that appears on the desktop. Now it's worth noting 
that uh, even though SDR Uno has a great number of available settings, you by no means need all of them to verify that the thing is working correctly and start receiving signals. Depending on your screen resolution, you may have multiple windows open up, even more than this. But the key ones we need are the main window, the RX control window, which mimics the uh, front panel of a typical transceiver, and the main spectrum window. The auxiliary spectrum window will also pop up and is useful as a zoomed in view of what's happening in the main window. In my case, it's also opened up the memory panel, which we don't need right now, so I'm going to close it. Um, Remembering the, the key parameters that we just discussed, I'm using an RSPDX which has multiple inputs, so I need to make sure that I've selected antenna A, which is the antenna uh, port to which I connected the blue wire antenna. So having done that, we now turn the gain up to maximum and we click on play. And there's no signals there and I'm gonna mute the, the uh, radio and by default, the radio starts up at 3.5 megahertz, and I'd like to point out that uh, all frequencies displayed in UNO, whether here in RX control or down in the main spectrum window, are in hertz. So 3500000 is 3.5 megahertz. Um, that is 35 kilohertz. It is not 35 megahertz, just so you're clear. So one of the ways that uh, you can guarantee you enter the frequency correctly is by use of the band select buttons over here. So uh, since we're just verifying it, we're gonna use the local broadcast signals because they're nice and strong. And I'm gonna hit medium wave. And what that will give us is a spectrum of the AM broadcast band uh, here in North America. And uh, if I click on this signal here, which should be KRLD at 1080, unmute it. Jumbo, FHA, VA, USDA to reverse mortgages, we got you covered. Ask us about a cash out refinance. So you will see that the, there is the spectrum for you, and uh, it correctly selected the mode, which was one of the other things we wanted to uh, um, set to get signals out of it. So now, for example, let's go to the FM broadcast band, and uh, I'm going to take us directly to 100 megahertz. And the quick and easy way to do that is to uh, left click on the frequency display and I can type 100 and then the letter M, which will take me directly to uh, 100 megahertz. And uh, here you see uh, an FM station down here with the HD radio sidebands. Um, now for FM broadcast, we need to select FM. It's a uh, broadcast station, so we need stereo wide FM and the filter bandwidth 192k. So having done that, we should be able to hear a local radio station. And uh, as I mentioned, you see a, a close-up view of the selected bandwidth, which is the darker area on the screen, appears between the red lines in the uh, auxiliary SP window up here. Now we're not exactly on frequency and uh, an easy way to fine tune is to uh, use the mouse wheel, which will uh, tune you around the dial. So 99.5 is where I think we want to be for this station. So we can uh, use the mouse wheel over a selected digit to get exactly on frequency. And there you have it. Those are the only settings you need to make to tune into different stations. If you want to try the ham bands, if you've got a better antenna than I have here, simply select one of the ham banks. I'm going to mute the signal. Um, with my blue wire antenna, I'm not going to pick anything up. But I do want to illustrate that if I hit 20 meters, for example, uh, it will frame the band for me from 14 to 14.3 megahertz. Again, notice the frequency is displayed in hertz. So 14175000 is 14.175 megahertz. And uh, because I used the band select button, it has automatically selected upper sideband for me, which uh, saves a little bit of time. So if I now go to 40 meters, uh, now my tuning range has been changed to 7 to 7.3 megahertz, and the mode has been changed to LSB. 
So very quick and easy way to verify that uh, your radio is working is put a, a, a very basic antenna on there and tune to the local broadcast bands. If I had this hooked up to my uh, HF antenna, I would be pulling in stations on the uh, HF bands right now. And uh, one thing you might want to refer to is it, from the options button in the main window, you have the choice to open up the user manual. It was installed automatically when you installed SDR Uno. And you'll probably want to refer to that frequently as you get used to all the features that SDR Uno has to offer. Um, as I mentioned, there are many, many capabilities within SDR Uno and uh, feel free to experiment. If something bad happens when you change a setting, then unchange that setting. If the, uh, if the uh, something bad that happens causes it to stop working, don't worry. There's a get out of jail free card. If you click on the options button again, there is a reset to default settings. And that will get you back to where you started from, no matter what you played with. So look at the user manual, uh, reset if you get into trouble, and uh, go back to sdrplay.com and visit that uh, applications and support catalog. Uh, there's additional tutorials there on getting the most out of SDR Uno, using it to make a pan adapter with your existing rig, using it with third-party software for digital decoding, uh, you name it, there is a ton of information available for you there online. So far we've downloaded and uh, played with SDR Uno, but what if you want to try out some additional software? Well, the good news is we've got it all set up for you. It's very easy to do. It just takes another trip back to sdrplay.com and you can try different SDR packages, different types of add-on software, and uh, above all, you don't have to register again. So that makes it even easier. Let me uh, walk you through how you will do that. This time when we go to the SDR Play website, we can bypass the start here and registration system altogether. And to get the additional software, we can either go to the navigation bar at the top and select software and downloads, or we can go to the quick link button here on the right, need software for your RSP. So if we click on that, it takes us to the software homepage, which is the same as the one you saw before. But this time, instead of clicking on start here, we can just go down, select our RSP model, I'll say an RSP1A, and our operating system. And we will be taken directly into uh, the download section. And then the software that's presented to you will be tailored towards your choices of both the RSP you have and the operating system you're using. So for example, if uh, you've been using SDR Uno, but you want to check out some of the third-party packages, you have a choice of Cubic SDR, SDR Console, and HDSDR, and you're welcome to download those and try them, and then use whichever one uh, suits you best. Uh, there's other software available that's fun to play with. Uh, Spectrum Analyzer is a great tool for evaluating performance of any filters you may have made. Uh, GNU Radio, if you want to build your own radio, uh, that's primarily a, a Linux thing, but can be run on Windows also. Uh, there's also a section for plugins. Uh, you installed all the basic plugins when you installed SDR Uno, but occasionally the community plugin installer will be updated with the latest third party plugins, so you may want to visit for that. ADSB, uh, these are transponders on aircraft at 1.09 gigahertz. It's a lot of fun to track those uh, transponders and plot them on a map. You can download software for that. You can download the uh, TCP server for remote operation. And you can also download the EXTIO plugins, which are used for other types of software uh, that require a plugin to operate particular models of the RSP hardware. So there's lots of stuff here you can play with, and uh, you're more than welcome to come in and uh, download the software and play with it. Uh, as an example, let's look at the SDR Uno plugins. And uh, here's the SDR Uno plugin installer. These are for the official plugins from uh, SDR Play. Uh, in addition, there's the community plugin installer, and those are for 
plugins developed by third parties and they're both available for download so if you see an announcement that uh, an updated version of the community installer is available go to this page and download it uh, if for some reason you want to go back in time to legacy software that will also be shown as applicable on this page uh, on the lower portion of the page uh, in general you won't be needing that but if you want it it's there so what do you do if it still doesn't work? You followed all the steps I've showed you in the videos and there still seems to be a problem. Well, don't worry, help is at hand. And again, going to our website at sdrplay.com, there's a couple of ways that you can uh, find the help you need to get yourself up and running. You can look in our applications and support catalog. There are other how-to videos in there. Uh, you can specifically um, input what type of problems you're having and get suggested solutions. And if that doesn't work, you can open up a support ticket. So now let me walk you through how you will do that. Returning once more to the sdrplay.com website, you'll not be surprised to find there are at least two ways to get to the help section. Again, there is a, an item up at top on the navigation bar. And uh, also there is a quick link button on the right hand side that we can click to get us into the help system. And uh, help is broken down depending on the type of help you're looking for. Is, is it tech help you need? Are you looking for help in deciding which RSP you're interested in? Uh, if you're new again, there's the green start here button. If you're checking on your order status, you can do that. If you already have a help ticket running, you can check on your status there. Um, one thing you can do is uh, just browse our applications and support catalog. That's also available uh, via a direct link at the top here, applications and support. And uh, what that will do is it brings up a list of various videos and documents that are available. Uh, you, it's divided into various categories, but you can also search. So if, for example, you're setting up a pan adapter, you can type in pan adapter and uh, we can search all categories. And uh, here you see uh, some of the videos and documents that are available telling you how to set up a pan adapter. A uh, very powerful search tool. Um, perhaps you have a, a more general help question regarding uh, setting up SDR Uno or something like that. So we can go into the tech help. And again, it's, it's broken down into hardware and software issues. Some of the most frequent support questions appear on the right. Uh, let's, let's pick uh, software again. Uh, the help system will work based on the particular model and uh, operating system you're using. And you can even select which particular software you're using. So uh, for example, going to the uh, software page, um, what happens if it says no device is found? And uh, you will see some advice here, uh, some specific advice for Windows 10 and Windows 7, uh, links to documents from the video catalog. Uh, the help system is designed to be somewhat intelligent and based on your input as to what the problems are, it will try and pull uh, videos and other documentation out of the uh, applications and support catalog to help answer your questions. If for some reason after reviewing this material you still have issues, find the still need help button at the bottom, click on that and uh, you will be sent into the ticket system and you can put in descriptions of uh, what the problem is. Uh, most of the information uh, about your particular setup will be auto-populated when you told us that when you logged into the help system. Give as much description as you can and a picture's worth a thousand words. So if possible, get a screenshot, add that to the help ticket and uh, we will be able to respond to you typically well within 24 hours. So lots of help resources there and uh, do not hesitate to contact us if you have any issues.